In this video, we will add a new credential to the vault. Find the different modules and choose the PAM module. Here, choose All under Credentials. This report brings all the credentials for a particular vault. To add a new one, use the Action button and choose e New. And choose New. This will open a pop-up window where we can add both basic and advanced information. In the Information tab, type in the username for this credential, choose a password type, as well as a domain and tenant. One of the most important steps involves selecting the right device for this credential. And after choosing both a password type and a device, a new section appears at the bottom with the password policy, and the expiration settings. This information is intrinsic to the device and password type and cannot be changed here. We can also include some additional information if needed and choose whether the credential will be enabled or disabled upon creation. In this field, you can add its current password or have the vault generate new password automatically according to the policy below. And finally, you can also add tags to make it easier to identify each credential. Moving on to the second tab, named Execution Settings. The first field refers to the existence of a parent credential registered in the vault. We can also enable automatic changes for this credential. In other words, whenever the credential is used, a new password will be generated. If you choose to enable this option, select a plugin, then a template, among those that are listed for your vault. You can also choose whether this credential can be used to authenticate itself or if a second credential will be used in the authentication process before the password is changed. In the third tab, we find the session settings. Here we can enable and disable connectivity options by clicking on the checkboxes. We can also choose to restrict access to the remote application only and add macros to it. These macros should have been previously added to the vault. Here is the macro that had been previously mounted and its connectivity type. And, once again, we can choose to allow this credential to authenticate itself or choose a second credential and device to do so. If you go to the fourth tab, you will find some additional settings such as identifiers, the parent user or owner of this credential, the server path, as well as the credential's criticality. We can also add any additional authentication fields we need or if we need to have. 
If you need to customize the fields for your credential, click here to add your name, your short name, and value to make it possible for the password to be changed. There is even a text field where you can leave notes for future reference. Finally, the last tab brings our JET settings. We can choose to enable just-in-time settings, in which case we will need to select a JET type among those that are enabled in your vault, such as Enable Disable or Create Delete. Here, we can also choose which credential will be used in the authentication process and choose the plugin and template to be used in just-in-time accesses. We always need a plugin template pair for credential creation and another one for credential removal. And the same happens if you choose to enable or disable credentials. This depends on the JIT type you chose on the top. By clicking on the Save button, the credential will be added to your vault. We can find this same screen using the quick menu icon at the top and then choosing Add New Credential. This will open the very same pop-up window we have been using to set up a new credential.